But we have so much to discuss this week. And Goopy, would you like to introduce our special guest this week? Yeah, so um, this week we're joined by um, writer over at Unicorn, uh, Dustin Steiner. Um, he's been covering Overwatch and a lot of things, just esports in general, for a long time. Um, he's someone who I've looked up to a lot, kind of entering into the scene as a newer journalist. Um, Dustin's a great person that kind of demonstrates what journalism is all about. Um, there's a lot of kind of controversies about that right now in the Overwatch community. I think Dustin's a good kind of beacon for um, what journalists are kind of looking at um, and looking to be um, in the scene right now. So, Dustin, thank you for joining us. Oh, hey, thanks for having me, guys. I'm uh, really happy to be here. And, uh, you know, thanks for the compliments, man. It's just, uh, you know, grinding every day, man. Just uh, out here reporting. Also sure. has a great beard. Thank you. <laughs> Very important step yes. in being and a journalist. And as you all know at home, those who have followed us for a while, every single week we do need to start off the episode by resetting our watch. And it has been daylight savings time, so we need to be extra careful this time around. So, um, Thibble, I'm going to let you uh, take it away. What have you been up to? Passage of time is really weird because uh, I didn't <laughs> do a whole lot last week. I was prepping for BlizzCon stuff. Um, and, and admittedly, not a lot happened on the professional front at BlizzCon. I was too busy uh, being disappointed. Um, but... I did finally, we'll get to that, don't worry, don't worry. I did finally publish uh, my interview with Zachary. We got that sorted. It was a great interview. Everybody, I think, loved it. I didn't hear anybody telling me it was terrible, which is great. I did get some people questioning his, uh, like, being okay with pineapple on pizza. But, like, you know, it's okay to be wrong. So th that discussion just kind of falls by the wayside. The, the interview itself was great. Um, and then I went to BlizzCon. And I, I drove 500 miles and I, uh, I bought a book. I saw Moth's parents who I oh. you know, interviewed like last month. They needed seats. So I was like, everybody get out of these seats in front of me right now. Go find somewhere else. And then <laughs> I grabbed them and very gently escorted them to their seats, which they were very grateful for. Um, his mom broke her foot. I don't know how that happened, but she like turned the corner and she was like, oh my God, Brandon, thank you for getting us seats. And she's just like limping along in a boot. And I'm just oh, like, no. oh no. What? what? She was like, <laughs> I don't worry about it. I'm from Minnesota. I don't care. Sure. Okay. okay. The BlizzCon was great. Not much writing. <laughs> I'm going to pick that up this week. Lots of stuff coming. Very busy. Yeah, us Midwesterners are, are pretty tough with stuff like that. Really quickly, though, um, all of you, uh, including Dustin, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? I'll start with you, Dustin. I, I mean, I, I, I'm just kind of neutral on this. Uh, I'll, I'll eat it if someone orders it, but it's not something I'm going to go out of my way for. Goopy, you are making faces. Yeah, there's, there's, this is a no for me. <laughs> this is an it, Chief. Uh, no way. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a tropical fruit. Um, it's not a it's not it's not Italian food. It's just not another uh, pizza is really Italian food, you know, whatever. But no, it's a no for me. No Bibble. way. I was, gonna, I was gonna say pizza is an Italian food co-opted by the Greeks and then moved <laughs> to New York and then spread across oh, no. America and then the world. If we want to talk about food history, uh, I consider myself somewhat of an aficionado. Also, wow. uh, the balance of sweet and savory has always been one of the most guiding principles of pizza. Therefore. I must say, pineapple on pizza, A plus discussion. Oh. Ham, bacon, and pineapple is the best combo you can put on a pizza. I mean, if you're going to put bacon on there too, I guess. That's the thing, right? Like, yeah, like you can't like just do pineapple. Good. That's weird. But like pineapple with other stuff, just combo it out. That's that's my take. And, and Goopy, so this week, have you had any... Anything crazy going on, including maybe even some of those uh, yeah, food choices? You didn't give us your opinion, Katrina. Yeah, oh, did I? Oh, okay. Um, for me, my general philosophy to life is do it if it doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, so I don't care. I won't eat it, though. It's not a personal favorite of mine. You're pineapple yeah. agnostic. Yeah. Also, uh, before I get to my things, Vals, uh, in the chat, will you please, uh, you know, we're going to get to the World Cup eventually. Uh, this oh, first 10 man. minutes is, is banter time. So if you'll just be patient, we'll get to it eventually. He doesn't <laughs> anyway. understand banter. He doesn't know what that is. <laughs> That's true. Um, anyway, this past week, I have not had any pineapple on pizza, but I did get to try the World Cup viewer out a little bit. Um, I was trying it kind of live while BlizzCon was going on, and then I just really missed the casters and the convenience of just like sitting there and watching it. So I went back to watching the stream. 
Uh, but then kind of went back and watched the VODs afterwards and, and made a top six moments from the UK versus US piece. Um, just kind of uh, re recapping, I think, the six moments that exemplified kind of how the US got beat, maybe just tried to explain some things that were going on. Um, I'm really bad at using the World Cup viewer, so the highlights were pretty rough. But um, it was really fun to use for content creation. I think it's going to be something that's like incredible going forward. So super excited about that. Um, hopefully going to try and use it more. Um, if you are wanting to do World Cup stuff, um, that will go away, I think, 30 days after the last game or something like yeah, that. I so know that. so yeah. if you want to get your pieces made, uh, I think you've got like 20 days left. Like go through and clip as much stuff as you want. So yeah, announce question. That. Answer. Yes. You were only able to find six things wrong with the U.S.'s performance this week? So six uh, things that maybe modeled <laughs> a grouping of, of things in the, you know, positioning was like a thing, but there was a lot of positioning clips. You know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely not just six moments that were problematic. Though. Okay. Yeah. That, that yeah. seems fair. Because I yeah. was going to yeah. say, I, oh, it hurts Way so more. much. Just, yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah, who did you guys have winning the World Cup again? Denmark. Hey, sh shut up. How about that? That's who I got winning. <laughs> so up. this past weekend, really? I did go to BlizzCon alongside Thibble, <laughs> and it was brilliant. Um, everyone is so tall. Everyone is so friendly. Um, it, it was just a dream for me, being able to meet a lot of my um, role models and mentors and, and Thibble. Um, <laughs> oh, so it was I, a great I didn't time. I recognize him without his mask on, to be honest. I so. know, right? True. What were you up to this weekend, Dustin? Uh, attending a lot of press conferences. Um, I was basically at all of the World Cup press conferences, um, just asking questions and farming for quotes, and uh, you know, trying to trying to inject some spice into the proceedings because everyone was just asking really bland questions. But uh, I kind of got. Um, uh, debated by translators that didn't ask my question. So, um, oh no. What's yeah, the question that you wish could have been asked? Uh, the question that I wish could have been asked correctly was: I asked Team China what they thought of Shanghai Dragons going to own forty, and if they would show them up at Overwatch League next year. <laughs> and uh, they basically said, "Yeah, there's a lot of things that China can do." I'm like, "Okay, and there we go." That's cool. An answer to something. Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so, Justin, for a bit of context, um, kind of, you know, you don't have to necessarily reset your watch and tell us what you've been working on, you know, if you're kind of in the mix on a few different things, but just kind mm -hmm. of give us some, an introduction to who you are and maybe uh, what you do over at Unicorn for those viewing who don't know and just kind of introduce it to yourself generally. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Dustin Steiner. Um, I'm a writer for uh, unicorn unicorn.com. Um, I've been writing in and around esports for about six to seven years now. Um, I've covered everything from StarCraft to League to fighting games to now Overwatch is my big deal um, and CS. So um, yeah, I've been kind of all over the place. Uh, I'm definitely trying to make a name for myself as a Overwatch League beat reporter. And I think I've done okay for myself uh, so far, um, but yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I just I do all sorts of content. I had everything from features to Q and A's to breaking news to explainer pieces, SEO stuff. You know that kind of stuff. The whole deal. The whole yeah. that's I am a jack of all trades. That's What's your favorite? favorite? My favorite thing to do. Um, I like breaking news. It, it's fun. Uh, I mean, it's, and it doesn't take necessarily like maybe as much work as feature does, but like it's just a lot of talking to people and, uh, just kind of, you know, getting to know contacts and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Fun. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the spice that you're injecting into panels here. Um, this is something I've witnessed too. I know exactly what you're talking about. But for those who maybe haven't attended a bunch of press panels like we have, what's the deal with the questions that people ask at these things? Like, what are they missing? Honestly, I, I think that people just are trying to be safe. 
because there's a Blizzard rep sitting right there and or, you know, a developer or there's team reps or whatever. There's somebody sitting there that might might say, oh, don't answer that or whatever. Or they're or they're trying to get a very specific answer to write something. But which I mean, you know, that's kind of what I do sometimes the way, you know, when I ask questions, I'm looking for an answer. But they ask very safe things like they just want general feelings on how they feel about a match or whatever that they can just quote. Um, other than that, I mean, it's, it's, it is very, very much safe questions and people just, I don't know, ask them just because they feel like they have to ask something and they don't know what else to ask. Do you yeah. feel like there's been a difference in terms of journalism between Overwatch or StarCraft or other titles that you've worked on? Uh, yeah, it, it, it depends. I mean, some games are harder to break into than others. Um, I know when, when I do CSGO, um, you don't really get as much name recognition in, in a game like in an older game like CSGO unless you're an insider that's constantly breaking roster moves. Like if you're writing a feature, no one's gonna really look at who the feature's from or what outlet it's on. They'll just talk about the subject. Uh, whereas in Overwatch, like you know, you can kind of build a reputation because the esport is so young that you know people appreciate whatever content you put out there. Um, I also noticed that like uh, Overwatch is easier to get interviews in in general because PR representatives are a thing. Uh, some teams in other games are a little iffy about it, and yeah, but you know, so but and then the the um, to completely contrast with that, then you have things like the fighting game community where you just go to an event and you walk up to somebody and say, "Hey, can I get an interview?" and you get the interview. There is no like gate in, you know, ness or whatever. No, it's like yeah. that. that sounds kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So, so, like, so I want to kind of talk about. Oh, good. No, no, that was it. Uh, that's it. Sorry. Um, I was going to see if we could talk about the World Cup a little bit. BlizzCon Vals sure. is chomping at the bit in, <laughs> in chat, so I just want to, you know, so, you know, get him to calm down a little bit. He's just <laughs> ravaging. Um, so you guys were all there. Um, what was, I mean, can you just give me, you know, an outsider, someone who was just watching it? Like, what was the arena like? Like, what was the environment like? Do you guys have a favorite game? I mean, what were your, I mean, Dustin, you guys were all there. What, what were your, kind of your feelings about it? I think the 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 biggest thing for me was just how much the arena popped off when UK was holding South Korea. Like, that was just incredible. That was the most I saw the arena pop off the entire weekend. Like, everyone was just going nuts because, you know, South Korea could have lost that match against UK. It could have happened. So, um, you know, everyone was just very, very super excited. Um, I, I was really impressed with the with the arena too. I, I, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it's a similar setup to last year, but uh, you know, unless until you're there in person, it's uh, it's a little hard to get the scope of what exactly what you're looking at. On. It's an entirely unique experience. Um, very similar in many ways to being at Blizzard Arena, um, but the arena at BlizzCon is just a little bit bigger. Um, not quite Barclays Center size, but still way larger than the 400 seats or whatever in Burbank. So that was an experience in and of itself. People running around, like cameras flying all over the arena and stuff, taking pictures and video and B-roll. Um, you could see the crew running around, like setting up for their their between, like their halftime bits and stuff. Um, and then the crowd itself was ridiculous because you had... Since BlizzCon is so big and since so many people specifically come out for BlizzCon, you had a section full of people from China cheering for the Chinese <laughs> team. Excuse me. Or, bless you. <laughs> or a, a section of people all for the UK team that were obviously having plenty to cheer about um, right up until the end. Um, after the US uh, died, the, the UK became the underdogs that everybody started rooting for, which is why everybody was cheering for them against South Korea, who, of all the stories to happen, having the UK be th that close to taking an entire game against South Korea and moving on to the grand finals was unbelievable. So that was definitely the storyline of the weekend and what people latched onto a lot because that arena was going crazy for those guys. 
Very mm-hmm. well deserved. Very good games. Not only was the UK so well supported, you have to talk about Team China. I mean, just the crowd was brilliant coming in from China. You had some owners of new teams in the front row. All the signs were crazy. The cheers were, um, it was it was a very infectious environment. And mm-hmm. um, I was sitting with a lot of um, people who love Team China, um, a lot of analysts who have been following them for a while. So I think I was the only one um, rooting for South Korea in the little group of people I was sitting with for the finals. So that was that was an interesting experience in itself. But um, what was really interesting to me, this was my first LAN ever, so totally brand new. Um, mm-hmm. I, I almost didn't hear the casters at all um, because everyone was just cheering so loudly. And, but at the same time, because I was sat, like Paula Mel was behind me, for example, like you could still get the analysis just because of the people sitting next to you and being really excited. And it was um, amazing. I was, I was very, very lucky. That was really cool in and, of, in and of itself because we were sitting next to people who had a very high understanding of the game, right? Mm-hmm. So we would sit together and we would be we'd be ult tracking and we'd say, oh man, the Doomfist is sitting right here. You know, if they roll out and get this combo on the Zen before the Zen pops their trans and like people would accurately call what was going to happen in a fight. And that's a very satisfying right. feeling for these guys that are working on being good casters who can do that or analysts or writers or anything like that like us so being able to have that conversation in real time in person was awesome and really (laughs) there's no other place or time where that can happen so that's that was neat i I felt like another cool thing i really enjoyed on the production side because i wasn't at the arena was the the different um like on the floor uh, i don't know if you want to call them like like team liaisons or like the The insiders the The insiders insiders, yeah. yeah That was super cool. I think the the bilingual, like not having a translator to kind of have to intermediate, like it was just. I thought it it ramped up the production value a lot, made it really smooth. Um, they were all really cool personally. Like they got in with the crowd and like helped with the chants. So I like I really enjoyed that, and it was just a good bit of of diversity for you know Overwatch as well, like like with the production talent. So that was also just really cool. Um, I thought overall, but just side note, you know. What I hope they do your... that with uh, Overwatch League, to be honest, next season. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that'll be really neat if they had insiders for every team. But anyway, sorry. No, <laughs> this, no, you uh, totally agree. Um, what were all, we're all of your agree. favorite maps? Sorry, Thibble. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying we agree. We're all agreeing. <laughs> we're all friends. <laughs> favorite maps? Um, matches, I mean. Matches. Oh, match. Sorry, oh. guys. Um, For those of you at home, I'm suffering from BlizzCon flu, so I'm a little. A little murky. That's okay. <laughs> I I actually liked um, China versus Canada a lot. So I thought that was going to be a really close match. So I you know you know China played really good in their first game against Finland, uh, like totally blew them out. Finland didn't know what was going on, and I thought maybe Canada would have time to scout and it would be a really close game, maybe go to five games. But then we just saw how good Gushue, Leave, Crystal, all these players for China are like it just blew my mind um, I know again this is for Vals uh, but it just like it was it was kind of a proving ground for me because Canada was this team not that I'm discounting Finland at all but China like, like Canada had had time to scout them um, and then China was still able to come out and, and do really well um, so I thought that one just had a lot of cool kind of unique storylines to it uh, what about you Dustin what was your favorite match of the of the tournament uh, I think UK versus South Korea was my favorite. Um, just to see a, a team full of, um, you know, contenders talent, like push an owl, to, like basically the top caliber owl player that you can get, you know, just so far. Uh, I think that says a lot for, you know, just their calibers as a team and players. And um, I think that scouts should definitely be looking at UK, like any of the players. Obviously, Fusions is already coming into the league. Right. And, so uh yeah i definitely <laughs> think it's going to be uh interesting to see what happens in the, in the rest of the off season with them heck yeah i would say so it's easy to say sk versus uk because that was an amazing game you know we could have gone to like seven maps on that game which is scary yeah because we drew twice anyway that, was crazy. Um, that game was really good but i gotta give it up to south korea versus australia Despite being a 3-0 sweep, 
and generally not the most competitive of games, Australia still had their moments where I was like, wow, these guys aren't getting completely 100% dumpstered, which nobody expected. Like the bar, yeah, is pretty low, but at the same time, being able to do that at all is still pretty impressive. And each of those mm. maps was still very close. Like ultimately, the score line will tell you that they got swept and they did, but like none of them were just like US versus UK level. So can I just can I just say US versus UK, but the first map? That was the <laughs> best part of the weekend for me. Oh, that, that one game of Ilios was the best Ilios I've ever seen. God. So good. Oh. And then... Just the biggest false sense of security of all time. Honestly. I mean, just a smash. It was just that. It was just, yeah. they were too smug. They weren't yeah. prepared. Sinatra. They didn't want to play goats. They wanted to play like something cheeky that didn't give anything away. Mm. And then they died horribly. So, yeah. I just don't want to think about that one. So I'm going to say SK versus Australia. Because it was fun. And I do I like want to think about team. that. I really do want to think about that one, though, because there's so much to talk about do with that. I know it's <sighs> briefly, I promise. But I I liked your point regarding, was it maybe overconfidence? They were using very interesting strats, um, especially Muma staying on the wrecking ball was something that stood out to me, even though, yes, he's very good at that hero. I, I felt like, I, I suppose we won't know for sure until Arrow um, will be tomorrow discussing what happened during the US and UK matchup, but it seemed like the United States was trying to hide um, strategies before South Korea. Dustin, do you do you think that was the case or was there just something uh, else generally? I think that they didn't prepare for yeah. UK at all. Like they weren't ready. Um, they, from what they said in the press conference, basically they only prepared for South Korea. They didn't, they didn't see UK as a legitimate threat and yeah. they, they got like I mean, that they didn't really say that they didn't see, see them as legitimate threat, but it's more like they were just like, yeah, we're focused. So we're focused on South Korea. Maybe we didn't prepare for them as much as we should have, which to me says like, yeah, like, oh, we're just going to smash them anyway. Like why do we yeah. have to prepare? Um, well, they, uh, they saw why they had to prepare for any opponent. Um, I mean, especially with these players that are in Overwatch League, like it's not like there's not a lot of footage of them playing out there. So they, yeah. they could get they got scouted pretty hard yeah it, it felt like the overall I think the the one of the key things to that game was positioning so with mm -hmm. goats your positioning has to be so tight and so precise and there's a lot of kind of minutia going on and it seemed like us was just throwing players around like they would just mm -hmm. poke in and try and kind of provoke a mistake to then jump on but yeah UK just wasn't buying it I mean they just stayed they did they played their game um it was it, you know, it makes sense that they said that they didn't prepare for him because it really just didn't look like they did. So, um, yeah, it was so weird to watch that game, though. I mean, just no one would have thought. But yeah, that that was really painful. Um, Fivel, do you want to walk us through kind of being on the floor of BlizzCon, being wearing your eagle mask, most likely, right where you wear that? Um, yeah. Can you just talk me through that game from? From Seagull Man's perspective. Yeah. What well, what were the five stages of being civil in oh the uh yeah. <laughs> they UK match? Really fast. They move <laughs> so fast. Okay. So <laughs> you you come in, right? I got there nice and early. I got my badge. I went through the crowd. I rushed over to the US section to get a good seat, right? Managed, got a pretty decent seat. Hyped. Very, very hyped. The entire stadium was buzzing. Because ultimately, like BlizzCon, yeah, a lot of people from all over the world come to BlizzCon, but it's in Southern California. This is a room full of Americans. Ready, right? The the opening ceremony goes through all the new announcements. Wow, uh, wow, crazy. Uh, the game starts, right? Everybody's hyping it up. Like the U.S. Oh man, this is gonna be easy peasy, shampoo squeezy. First map goes by. Everyone's like, "Yep, this is what we expected." That's the high point of the roller coaster right there. It, tick, 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 tick. We, get, <laughs> we get right here. And then as you, as you look down, you see King's Row, right? <laughs> and like a roller coaster, when you're at the top, you think, oh, this might be pretty fun. And then you start falling 
And then you go, oh, that's coming up really fast. Oh, <laughs> my stomach is in weird places that it doesn't belong. And we got full held on King's Row. And we go, you know what? Whatever. That happens. They can have a map. We don't need it, really. We just need two more wins. And then we lost again. <laughs> I'm like, all right. We can bring this back. This next map's pretty good. And then it wasn't. And like, <laughs> so, so the stages were hyped mild acceptance like whatever frustration shouldn't have lost that one what's the deal what's going on guys Sh you know shape up we just got back from halftime arrows talking to them a lot like between every map arrow would be on the floor like let's talk this out because that's the kind of coach he is and just the more they lost the more you were just like what's going on yeah. just utter confusion and bewilderment and then like there were like 40 seconds left in the last map and we had an old disadvantage and we were staggered. And I was like, it's over. We just yeah. lost. And by like map three, dead silent in the arena. It was like, no sound. Right. And then the UK wins and their little baby tiny section over there with like 20 people who assumed they were just going to get stomped out anyways. We're going crazy. They were like, ah, you stupid idiots. We got you. Friggin'. <laughs> American Revolution Part Two. We're taking back this country, suckers, and we just, <laughs> just what can you do? Word for word. What can you say? That's what can what you say saying. at that point? You're just done. Yeah. There was a moment I was sitting with with a couple of my friends, and that last map finished, and none of us said a word for 20 minutes. We just <laughs> sat there. It was terrible. It hurt so much, dude. The fact that it <laughs> happened, I feel like that. The fact that it happened on Route 66 too is just poetic justice. Like the most American map in the whole game. I mean, maybe besides Hollywood or whatever. But exactly. oh my gosh, this is American soil. We had the the Jesse McCree uh, short film earlier, yes. which was incredible. We can talk about that. But it just then, it's it's like that could have been the the most poetic turning point, and then we just lose. It's just unbelievable. Fusions just like takes us out. Unbelievable. <laughs> God, I'd actually please. like to go really quickly to that to that Jesse McCree yeah. short before That's we good. go back to Fusions, who I think um, would make Bob very proud. We have a couple of new characters coming to, well, heroes, excuse me, coming to Overwatch League and Overwatch in general. Oh, my BlizzCon fog, um, yeah. <laughs> including Ash and her ultimate is everyone's new favorite thing in Overwatch, Bob. So oh. Dustin, oh, my gosh. Um, first of all, that short was brilliant from from the pie crumble at the beginning to the high noon fight but two two potential heroes were kind of teased at during that entire that entire uh film yeah uh echo was the other one uh, right. the, okay. the the robot that uh that mccree was after um that he had some activator chip for for some reason Ooh, mystery. Right. He's the guy. That's yeah. He's 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 the guy that had it for some reason. Um <laughs> but yeah, it, it was it was really hype. I wasn't in the arena. I was actually in the mythic hall. So I was basically standing in the press in the press pit with all the other dog groups. And uh yeah, people we went pretty hyped for that. Um <laughs> that was like the only thing they pretty much went hyped for during that <laughs> during that little uh yeah. 40 minute pres or hour and 30 minute presentation. But uh, yeah, other than I guess Warcraft 3. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I didn't see anybody does. complain about that. No, no, no. Other but things. yeah, like, uh, you know, Diablo Immortal, for example. Not uh, a good thing. Nobody, no. Oh, yeah, unfortunately, no. unfortunately, the reception to that wasn't good, but I was just so excited to see Ash finally get revealed yeah. as that here. And I was just, I was a little bummed out at first because of course, Bob with his oil drip of sweat just captured my heart during that film. But then when you see her say, Bob, do something. And he just goes right in. Have have any of you been able to try um, Ash out on the PTR? Have you I played her yesterday. Oh, yeah, you yeah, too? I, yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I played her a little bit today. Um, I think she's really good. I think she reminds me a lot of uh, the rocket jumping on Team Fortress 2. It's like, it feels, mm -hmm like almost the exact same. I haven't played a lot of TF2, uh, Fibble you have, but uh, I mean, it looks and I think feels really similar. So that's funny, but 
Um, yeah, I think she's the the idea of doing the gun as her primary thing. I think is long overdue. We've had all these ability heroes and all these stuns, and it's really cool to see like a counter to that. Like just go back to a really cool gun, a knockback to get the stunning characters away from you. Like I think it'll be really interesting to see how she plays out in meta. I'm also terrible with her. To start. <laughs> oh like, yeah, I can I never suck. shoot the dynamite. I just can't hit. No, like I can't do it. I can't so. hit anything with that hero, dude. So it's cool. Fun fact for you guys that maybe you've seen the the shotgun, right? Lots of knockback, knockback for you and your opponent. If you hit a deflecting Genji, yeah, I saw. you land in like the next map. You go <laughs> flying because not only do you give yourself impulse, but the reflect gives you more. It's just <laughs> it's so much. That's the one good part is I can fly around like a force of nature scout, which they don't like you comparing her to. By the way, you're not supposed to do that, but yeah. like, the comparisons there. No, I, I really do also like, I, I love the high skill cap heroes, even though I know that they aren't necessarily the ones that all can be gravitating towards, but just seeing, for example, Effect and Sure4, trying them out on um, Custa, trying them out on Twitch this weekend on their streams, just the potential that this one hero has is, it's, it's hard for me to even put a ceiling on what Ash can do right now. And Dustin, um, do you think that she could be a meta changer or do you think she'll have high impact? I do. I think she's going to have uh, incredible impact. Um, I was talking with a, with a couple of the, um, maybe not coaches, but people involved with Overwatch League teams this weekend, and their impressions were basically like, "Yeah, we're probably going to see like triple sniper as wow. as as a as oh a composition." So oh, brutal. Yeah. Well, it, and it could be, and it could even be a quad sniper, like as we can, we have we have Hanzo, we have. Widow, we have Ash, and we have Anna, and then we have, you know, a, a tank, or like, and then two tanks, or yeah. a tank and a healer. So like, you know, and plus a Ash also kind of busts tank lines with with dynamite. So right. yeah, and then people are gonna play that on ladder, and then we're gonna have to deal with quadruple sniper on ladder at the plat yeah. level. Oh. Holy <laughs> cow! No, I, I, I think that was definitely fan service when they were showing off the, the dynamite ability and it was right at Brigitte. Um, oh, yeah, yes. that was that was, fan yeah, service was purposeful. Sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. It, it worked. worked. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's uh, exactly where it's going to be oh, used, sure. too. Like, goats, where you clump up. Yeah, have fun with dynamite that deals like, what is it, like 150 or 180 damage total over time? Yeah. Or yeah. like the initial impact plus the like the fire, which yeah. deals like... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah it's going to... It's gonna change things up yeah. in a big way. It makes me think of. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 that was. Oh, um, it makes me think of what Ash could have done necessarily. Um, you saw so much goats composition. I would like to take us to Rialto, UK versus South Korea. That map was oh absolutely God. amazing. Such a showcase for um, for both main tanks. Um, Fate was getting um, picked off very quickly in a lot of that map. Usually the first pick in in most of those team fights and it was so even and the, the crowd was as you were saying earlier they were just electric um what do you, what did you think uh goopy from home were you able to use the viewer or um watch any of uk versus south korea through that so i watched i had that at that point switched back to the stream because i was just feeling lazy and didn't want to like <laughs> have to you know go through all the characters and stuff but i mean watching the vod of it um i i did get to go through and watch i watched most of the UK games from Fusion's perspective as a Reinhardt and, and main tank. Um, it's just, it's insane to watch. Yeah. Um, like just his reaction time and his shield management. Um, I think on that map in particular, I mean, it was just, it was just dominant um, and just farms his ult so quickly. So uh, I didn't, you know, I haven't gone through that map in particular a ton, but uh, just from what I know about watching Fusion's, it was just unreal from him at least. Two things I noticed about Fusion's is that the UK's rollout plan very often, especially against South Korea, um, was Brig stun the Reinhardt, shoot him in the face, make him die very, very fast, right? Because you'll have that half second window. And even with a Zarya bubble, if all six of you just click on yeah. his head, there is nothing he can do. You can yeah. very easily burst down that five or 700 HP if you're very coordinated about it. And they did a very, very good job of that. Two, there's a mind game to playing Reinhardt against another Reinhardt, right? 
how to manage when your shield is up, when you're going to shatter, you know, how you're going to walk around each other when you're going to fight, how to manage that with your Zarya. Fusions doesn't play the Reinhardt mind game like anybody else. No. Nope. There were very many fights where he would just walk up, no shield, and fate or whoever would go, all right, we're going to start swinging. And then he'd press Q. That's it. It's it's like that one clip from, from Smash Brothers that's famous. It's like, did you just walk up slowly and earth shatter? Because that's what he would do. And yeah. it would work. He five man shattered the US, the oh UK, my gosh. everybody. Yeah, yeah. No one was safe because there are certain expectations. And when you go against that, you're going to get some huge plays. So he knew that every time and played it very, very well. And Dustin, what did you think about UK versus South Korea? A bit more in detail, maybe not necessarily about fusions, but you said that was your, your favorite match of this entire World Cup. Yeah, I, I think that, um, I can't remember exactly which map number it was, but it was on Rialto. Um, the, uh, basically the, uh, the Zarya ult that pulled South Korea off of the payload long enough to where they they could oh. they could jump back the forced c9 yeah. the forced yeah. that was that was like 500 iq like the, that was the smartest play i have like yeah. ever seen in over i was just yeah. like it was just like wait wait we can't get back or oh we're screwed yeah <laughs> mikey a was just triggered after that first ilios map I yeah. mean, from the rest of the tournament, he played out of his mind. Mm -hmm. It was just unreal. He and Kib both. Yes. Oh, yeah. Kib on the Roadhog? Getting... Kib played like. He played Widow against, against Carpet. I mean, I think, yeah, I think the only yeah. person who played more heroes than him was Leave, who yes. was in and of himself yeah. just a, a force of nature that we'll get to. But yeah, Kib shot people on Hanzo. He was playing Wrecking Ball. He played anything. Doomfist. He... It's wild. That was a madman. It hurts. Yeah. I wish if... we had the Mad Men. Yeah. Did you have, um, <laughs> speaking of Mad Men, did you have any general MVPs for this whole tournament? We did see that um, Jonak, of course, was awarded MVP of not only Overwatch League, but the World Cup. Pretty incredible accomplishment and, and deserved, I would say. Um, but there were also some major standouts, um, especially um, certain tank player from China, Gu Shui. Um, he just seen him juggle all of these supports on Winston was inspiring in a way. Um, we we had this, a similar thing happen with Miro last year in the World Cup from South Korea. He redefined how Winston was being played. What made Gushue so effective or different on his Winston? Who are you asking that question to? Anyone. I'll let Dustin take this one. You put me on the spot. Oh, uh, if, or or what did you enjoy about him? Uh well, like you said, he he was very good at you know juggling is managing his ult and uh just kind of giving himself that extra life bar that that you know people weren't able to focus him down that much. Um until you know, and I, I think he was a, a large part of their kind of brawl out strategy that just kind of slammed into everybody's composition leading up to South Korea where, you know, they kind of ran into a brick wall with it. But um, yeah, I, I think he was a big part of like their initiation and uh, everything was just, just on point the entire weekend. Yeah. I, I saw that a lot manifested in uh, Anubis against Canada um, when they just, I mean, Canada got first point really quick and it was just from that point on, it was, it was really hard to watch. Um, I mean, he really uh, took advantage of XQC and his aggression and I think just really managed it better. And it was like they would absorb contact really well. But, I mean, they were holding them at the outside of second point of Anubis for a long time. And a lot of that is, is obviously a team play. But Gushway, I feel like, was leading, kind of like you're saying, Dustin. He would lead those brawls going into those those team fights. And it was just, I don't know who the main shot caller for China is. But you have to think Gushway is a part of at least initiating those fights. I mean, they were just too, too yeah. you know, he was at the front line of those. So, um, that was a map where, I, you know, if you haven't watched it, that's the map to watch to see, you know, China really dominate and Gushui really lead that team. We never saw China versus UK, right? That was never a matchup. No. That would have been something yeah. else because my MVPs are basically tied for, for Gushui and, and Fusion. Like, yeah. it, it's someone in, in chat said it. This is an anti-main tank meta. This is a mm -hmm. meta designed yeah. to make main tanks hate themselves. 
and these guys were still pulling off stuff that like it, it harkens back to like you said Miro last year or Fisher earlier in season one where mm -hmm. he just single-handedly would turn around fights pop primal knock three people off a cliff survive and, and win the fight and take the point you know gushway infusions were all able to do that though they did have plenty of help because main tanks really need it right now in this meta to be able to pop off like that the big thing with these two is that their teams invested so many resources into them yeah. every zarya bubble every nade every sleep dart to keep them safe every shield bash to combo every grav you name it it was all done in the name of let that guy pop off and yeah, it worked yeah. obviously that really works but it also was the main reason that south korea was able to turn things around against gushui and team china it's because they said don't worry about him just get everybody else kind of like when there's a really good pharmacy comp and you're like i'm not going to be able to take out that pharaoh when she's getting double pocketed so let's just kill everybody on the ground and we'll deal yeah. with her later that's mm -hmm. what south korea did they carpe would pop up do some carpe things everyone with less than 500 hp would die and then gushui would just kind of like guess i died dead. right yeah exactly. <laughs> there's nothing you can do at that point it yeah. was really hurt because he was trying very hard i mean they all were everybody was giving it their all which made for some insane matches but south korea just has that extra level of understanding of like yeah. this player this is how this player is performing at the level they are right now this is how we dismantle all of their hopes and dreams and take their stuff. There you go. Yeah. Speaking oh. of which, oh, oh I, I'm just really excited. You mentioned Farah. I thought of Fleta. I'm a soul fan. That Farah play coming in from Fleta was just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And really well. he, he got a rocket barrage probably every three quarters of a fight, not just every fight. It was brilliantly timed um just the use of the concussive the concussive mind to get into the position. Um, really great pocketing. Um, from Animo on the Mercy, just spending that Resurrect only on Fleta on Nepal uh, Village, like every other fight. Oh, okay, we'll just res him back up and then he'll get a team kill on the entire enemy squad. And so that was definitely someone who I thought could have also been an MVP for this World Cup. Yeah. I So I mean, I'm, I'm kind of with, with uh, Brandon. I think it's it's between Fusions and, and Gushway for me. Um, kind of on the opposite end of it, though. I, I want to see what you guys... Uh, sorry, this is kind of branching off, but sure. I, I feel like the the thing the teams that aren't going to get talked about in this conversation at all when we look back on BlizzCon are France and Finland. So mm -hmm. I just want to like get you guys to read because I mean I wasn't I mean I didn't like I I wasn't there I don't know being there would necessarily give you a better read on these games but like what was it about like the Finland and um, the France games that happened like what what do you guys think happened in those games? I think sure for was. A major disruptor against France in that his Sombra was just so on point. Excellent EMPs, great placement, but he also showed a lot of versatility with his Widowmaker, which a lot of fans know him for his great accuracy. Um, I, I won't forget that LA Gladiators uh, where he was in Brigitte and spawn and then switched to Widowmaker, and I believe they were against Seoul at the time, and he yeah, he, yeah. he got all of those headshots. But um, going back to World Cup. Um, Hmm. Just the Sombra and Doomfist combo was just used so well. In from Canada and XQC's aggression was supported by the just all of those equally aggressive DPS players. I feel that, that France was a team that uh, their a bulk of their plan was to force 1v1s that they felt they could win. Widow mm -hmm. 1v1, Sombra 1v1s, main tanks, whatever, right? Canada said yeah, but I got five other teammates over there. I'll just call them over, right? So when Surefour would get in a duel or would poke around uh, as Sombra in the, in the back line or whatever, he'd pop in and then everybody would jump in with him, right? It's not just, I'm going to go try and, you know, pop up behind soon on Widow and dink him in the head a couple times since I'm invisible and I can just go do that. It's, I will go do that, but he will also have XQC in his face at the same time. And then mm. Ben Best was unfortunately outmatched which i can't say was too big of a surprise because xqc is pretty good and ben best is still in contenders one of the best honestly in contenders especially in europe um especially now that fusions is gone but uh yeah xqc 
had a good couple days all said and done even if his right click wasn't working half the time oh, or whatever right. that was yeah, that's, that's yeah in, insider knowledge for anybody who doesn't know the reason they ran so many winston focus comps on day one is that his right click just didn't work so he couldn't play reinhardt and he was like well just play yeah. dive sure fine great but that works they just kind of forced the issue but that like extra like wild card spice unexpectedness help them in a big way against against france yeah I, I was just i was shocked to see xqc win that i mean i feel like ben best is i you know at least in the qualifier granted i think their their competition level and their group stage was a little lower possibly i guess, I guess not with uk doing like they did but i mean he dominated in that qualifier and then to see that happen against xqc i think you know in this meta the main tank battle is so key and that's a lot of times what's telling about who's going to win a game is who has the more skilled main tank and to see Ben Best lose that dramatically is crazy. And I guess you could say the same about Fraggy. Um, I mean, that's, you know, he got subbed out last season. And I I don't know if you could say he's on the decline or anything, but um, that was just also a surprising thing. I don't know. Just want to show some love to those teams that got that got 3 0 you know. Talk about them a little bit, at least. I feel like they're <laughs> owed that much. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I, I, I do think that... Um... Paris, like Paris next year in Overwatch League is going to be a team to watch, um, you know, since a lot of those guys are on that team. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I was impressed with their play. Yeah, they got 3-0'd, but, like, they still put out a, a good enough showing to where, like, they, they showed what they had. So, What teams for next year for Overwatch League Season 2 do you think will be doing – really well again or maybe even define expectations um shanghai dragons might come to mind um Thibble, I'll, I'll start with you what teams or one or two teams that you are really going to be watching for curious to see what a seagull list dallas fuel looks like it's probably oh. not great i'm just gonna say he was really good <laughs> and i missed it so much um, I will say Shanghai will definitely do better. Wow, what a bold take there. They'll win some games. Um, middle of the pack, I predict. But at the same time, coming with that that previous core from Kongdu is certainly something and more than a lot of teams can say. So if Bluehaas can keep his squad going at the rate they were going, looking pretty good. Um, if the Vancouver rumors are true and Runaway is coming over, there's potential. I don't know how much of their performance was based off of like their magical powers of being runaway and how much of it was based off of like, we're actually really good uh, though. Of course they are, they are extremely good at this game. Um, so you can't miss them. I want DC to do well. I love the staff. I don't know the roster yet, so I can't really comment too much on that, but like, uh, please give us something. Cause I've seen a lot of good players already go to other teams and that means uh, what do they have? Very curious. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and then, and then Paris is one to watch. I agree. They will be made or broken by their coaching staff. Yeah, and then London and Philly are those. And those are my last two. Yeah, I think for me, I'm actually I'm gonna have a bold take in a kind of negative way. I think that Paris is actually gonna exceed expectations in how bad they are. I think Paris will be a bottom three team, but I think they do have a pretty high ceiling with their coaching. I think that's right. I think they have some good players, but. I think, you know, if Shanghai taught us anything, a lot of times it's these these regionally built teams just don't really work out sometimes. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if that's going to be true for Paris or not. Um, I like a lot of their players. I think Soon, I think Ben Best, I think they have, like, a lot of talent. But I think they're going to be lower because the rest of the league is just going to have gotten that much better. Um, mm. So I don't know there. But I think the exceeding expeditions in a positive way are going to be the three Chinese teams. Three, not four, it's three, three. Well, the three, three new ones. Four included. Three new ones, yeah, that's right. So, four, I think all four will exceed expectations. I think all four could easily be in the top ten, which mm -hmm. I think is, you know, that might be a little bit too much. But I think we'll see at least one or two in the playoffs, um, which will be really cool, I think, for Chinese eSports, Chinese Overwatch in general. I think that'll bring a lot of the younger players who are maybe less known right now or playing other games into Overwatch. And then the scene will just get that much bigger because there's just so such a big population in China and such a big viewership that I think it's bound to start popping off sooner or later. So um, those are kind of my two to two things to watch. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll go. Uh, I mean, I honestly, I, I kind of disagree on the Shanghai bit, but I think the reason Shanghai kind of did not do well last season was 
just because a lot of their talent was super young. Um, a lot of the a lot of the players that we saw this year weren't eligible for Overwatch League season one. Um, you know, and they're coming of age now. Um, you know, and there were, of course, the allegations in Shanghai of their kind of being a, uh, uh, let's say, a little bit of corruption in how they built their roster. So who knows how how much truth there is that uh, it's kind of hard to say. Um, but uh, that being said, I, I personally I think Shanghai is going to be a top three team. I think I I think that the core they were putting together with Kongju. The fact that they got DM, like I, I just yeah. really think they're solid. Yeah, that's true. Here, um, you know, and I think uh, Yaguri is going to continue to improve and uh, you know rotate around with their new tank line uh, pretty well. Um, as far as other teams to watch, um, I'm really interested to see how Toronto does. Yeah, uh, they got um, uh, like uh, his name is escaping me right now. The Creator Winston's lab is their head analyst. I yes. think that that oh, you know, really. he's yes, yes. So I think they're going to put together a lot of really good strats. The roster they've got is uh, pretty good so far. I, I think, um, yeah. So uh, those those are my two teams to watch right now. Um, really, question. go ahead, go ahead. For Dustin, or I suppose for anybody, but I always like getting new perspectives here. Um, do you think that the the new teams the expansion teams will just by default struggle in the first couple weeks because they're just new organizations trying to like get back into it like do you think the teams that have some overwatch league talent already will largely be okay or are they all going to have that kind of like first couple weeks of shaking i think that season like season one may as well not have happened at this point aside from like maybe the spitfire but, like, so many teams are just changing altogether that, like, you know, changing staff, changing players, changing uh, how the season is played, changing everything. It's just a whole new ball game. I think everyone is just kind of going to have, like, I don't know if shaking is just the right word, but I don't think that past success is going to be a predictor of how, or, or even past tenure in the Overwatch League is going to be a predictor of how uh, the season's going to shake out at all. Yeah. I think we'll see that for the next like two years. I think that by 2020, teams are going to want to have like an infrastructure really in place. But before then, it's just like there's going to be so much changing house and, and players moving around. I think so. It's going to be a yeah. busy yeah. mid season. Yeah, that's, that's for I'm sure. Thinking. I will be right back. Okay. Okay. All good. Um. Rip. So so while Thibble is. Um, I, I'm going to say, I'm of course going to be looking forward to the NYXL with Flower coming into the roster. Um, mm -hmm. I know that's a bit of a cop out since they are, um, can be argued to be the best team in Overwatch. Um, although yes, Philly beat them and London did win the championship. I think NYXL will win next season. I'm calling it now. Oh, what do you have there, Thibble? Got some Lucio O's. Dang. That's this is Sonic Vanilla flavor, by the way. How how good are they? I haven't I haven't opened my box yet. So they're not gonna like that I'm saying this. They're just like vanilla fruit loops, which is good. That's not like a bad thing. That's just what they are. They're vanilla fruit loops. I actually haven't had like a proper bowl with milk. I've just been eating them out of the box. They're very sweet and very good. Yeah. Have you have you tried them with water? Oh get out. <laughs> Walk away. Leave wow. last for me. God, I'm milk so first mad. or cereal first. Yeah. So mad at OG for that. Oh man. Cereal first, you monster. Yep. <laughs> Katrina, I don't want to brush over your hot take though. You're saying Sorry, NYXL's yeah, go gonna ahead. win? You're gonna say NYXL's gonna win next year? Yeah. What? Wait, did you just say that? That's pretty yeah. bold. Well, I mean, that. speaking of predictions on this show, um, so before the World Cup. All three of us did decide to make predictions as to who would win, who would be in the finals. Um, Dustin, really quickly, um, who who did you think was going to win? Were you pretty confident in South Korea? Uh, yeah, I was confident that South Korea was at least going to make a finals appearance. A lot of people were saying that South Korea looked vulnerable this year. Uh, I was kind of on that train, but like at the same time, in South Korea, they always show up when it when it counts. Uh, so I thought they were going to be at least in the final. Um, as for their opponent, I honestly, I think I let my 
home country blind me a little bit. I wanted the U.S. versus Korea in the final, but that wasn't possible because of the bracket. But yeah, uh, as for like the other side of the bracket, I, I'm not. I, honestly, I wasn't sure. Yeah, it was just kind of a toss up for me. There were a lot of teams that looked like they could have made it, like Finland and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So. Well, these two were very sure <laughs> that um, Finland would make it to the finals oh, as man. well as the United States of America with the U.S. winning and taking it home. Um, however, I want to talk about it. What a I, I did indeed predict that it would be China versus South Korea, with South Korea coming out on top. Before um, this came to fruition, we did make a bet. Um, which you weren't going to do it. I think I'm thinking about something different. We'll talk about this after the show. Um, oh, no. So I'm not going to make these guys sing like we were planning on tonight because oh, let's be real, their, their voices are still sore from screaming from BlizzCon and yeah, uh, feeling miserable. Um, so, <laughs> but. Yeah, yeah. But um, I just wanted to have my little moment of victory there. And yeah, don't don't underestimate my predictions, guys. I, I think I think we're on to something good. But we only have a couple minutes left in our show, unfortunately. So I just like to go around and ask each of you what your favorite moment of BlizzCon was. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to think. Um, I'll, I'll go first. Um, my favorite moment of BlizzCon was probably the desk, um, the desk of Overwatch World Cup. Just seeing those four, Golden Boy, Reinforce, um, who is unfortunately not going to be um, having a talent contract next season, um, Sideshow and Bren. It was just, it was such an engaging desk. The whole crowd, I wish you could hear more of the crowd um, from TV if you weren't at BlizzCon because we were going absolutely crazy. It was just thunderous applause whenever anything happened. Like, for example, um, with the Lucios, that reminded me, Fibble, with um, Bren taking the milk back out of the bowl. Like, the, it, it, it sounded as if there was a massive concert going on and everyone was just going crazy, so... Dusk antics for me were the win. Um, Goopy, I'm going to throw it over to you. What was your favorite part of BlizzCon? You stole mine. Uh, the desk oh. had to be my favorite part. Um, I mean, so I've, I've kind of, you know, I've, I was a sports fan before, and one of my favorite desks was the TNT desk with, like, Shaq and Charles Barkley and, like, all these guys, and they just, like, act a fool. Like, Shaq has hit Kenny with a fish before. Like, crazy stuff happens on that <laughs> desk. And people love it. Like, people really love it. Like, that's great entertainment in, like, halftimes and stuff. And I think Overwatch really channeled that. And I think this was the the best they've ever done with an entertaining desk. That's why it's so heartbreaking that, that Johnny's not being brought back. Because that was, I mean, those four had this chemistry. I mean, him being roommates with Brennan Sideshow, Golden Boy being, like, the incredible, just enthusiastic guy he is. Like, they meshed so well. It was just incredible entertainment for me at home. Like I was loving it. Um, there were a lot of three O's, and they still managed to turn it into something really entertaining for the people at home watching. So um, that was just like unforgettable for me. So huge fan of the desk, the dunce hat, the cereal, <laughs> you name it. It was all just, it was so good. The syrup. Man. Sideshow stabbed me in the chest with the dunce hat later in that day, and it hurt. Like I was like, ah, it's paper. And then he was like, no, get away from me. And then it, it, it was just like, oh, God, my, my chest. Ow. I don't know if that was a highlight for me necessarily. It's just you know, throwing that out there. I was stabbed. I demand justice. Um, Dustin, what was your favorite part of BlizzCon? <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, like, it, it's hard to say. Like, I, I had a lot of favorite parts of BlizzCon. I, I'll just I'll look at my, my top three, I guess. Kind of just participating in all the press conferences was, was, was a big highlight for me. Uh, you know, getting to hear all the players' uh, insights afterwards, which I'll have articles out on Unicorn uh, within the next couple of days, shameless plug. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, number two uh, was Sarah winning uh, WCS, uh, the first non-Korean StarCraft player to wow. win the World Championship in that game. Uh, huge, huge, huge accomplishment for him. Um, I think that that was huge to just be able to be there and witness that ha happening crazy moment and uh number one this is going to sound a little weird but 
I kind of enjoyed Blizzard being booed a little bit for Diablo Immortal. Like I, I, I just I can see. Not, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It, it wasn't good for them, and uh, you know it's never really happened to them before. And I think there was a bit of humble pie. So uh, no, that that was that was uh, those are my moments. <laughs> yeah, B- yeah, BlizzCon always gives everybody is such an emotional, visceral reaction, and. I know I was just so happy and so proud to be with a bunch of people. Like like what they said, um, was it um, at BlizzCon, there aren't strangers, just friends you haven't met yet. Right. And I think that this weekend has truly embodied that. I got to meet some incredible people. And Dustin, getting to talk with you, meet with you this evening has been a pleasure. It's been a great experience. And I can't wait to see all of your work coming next week. And I'm also looking forward to... All, all the time what these two are up to. It's going to be a really great week coming up for us. And we might have to get on the PTR and play some Ash. And I'll think of a good punishment for for the two of you for being so disrespectful and wrong. Um, but for now, thank you to everybody who is at home. We love you so much for watching every week. Um, we're eight shows in. We've got to have something fun planned for our 10th episode. It's coming soon. Episodes already. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. For two months. <laughs> but, Wait, dude. Wow. but to you, all of you at home we hope that you do also see us as friends you haven't met yet if you are just tuning in we can't wait to share this journey with you and to everybody good night thank you for tuning in all right guys thanks for coming if you liked that hit the subscribe button for more interviews and other great sports and esports content make sure to also like us on facebook and follow us on twitter to stay up to date on all the news from your favorite sports and esports players and teams From our house to yours.